Welcome to the Messy Antics Podcast, a podcast about all things Messianic Judaism. Each episode, we will be sharing our opinions as we tackle some of the biggest issues in Messianic Judaism. Now, here's your hosts, Rabbis Eric, David, Jonathan, and Toby. Hey, guys, and uh, thanks for joining us for this special uh, uh, bonus material for you. Uh, we decided, as we just dealt with Hanukkah in uh, a recent episode, we wanted to just take some time to have a little fun and, and entertainment and uh, ask some rapid-fire questions of our Messiantics rabbis as it relates to uh, to Hanukkah. So uh, we're just going to dive right into this and, and have a little fun with it. Uh, I'm going to throw a couple of questions out, and we're all just going to kind of take some time uh, and respond quickly. Again, these are rapid fire. We're not looking for like dissertations. Just uh, just throw your response out. Whatever comes to mind uh, Who was that should be what entertaining, right? Uh, so that would probably right. be for Toby. Yeah. So so I question <laughs> question number one. I'm gonna throw this one to Rabbi Toby to begin it off with: is gifts or no gifts on Hanukkah? Uh, well, I ha- at first I have to turn to Leviticus. <laughs> <laughs> no. Um, we do gifts. Uh, we don't do a gift every night. We always do pajamas. That's, you know, um, tradition. You give pajamas or you wear pajamas? Well, we we'll wear them, but we <laughs> we usually all go out together and... Me in and Brooke, pajamas. Uh, yeah. So you go to Walmart to get gifts. Because if you go out in pajamas... I'll never you answer this to question. Walmart. <laughs> um, we usually go as a clearly family. if they're wearing pajamas, they're going to Walmart, not Target. We usually all go as a family out together. Uh, past few years, we've taken my mom. And we all just pick out what we want. Um, everybody just gets to pick the pajamas that they want, like the, the combination or the, the set they like. Um, uh, and uh, we usually give a few gifts during that time. But we, we're not uh, staunchly um, one, gift each, one gift each night. Uh-huh. Um, but So pajamas and a few gifts. Yeah, we gave gifts, uh, small gifts, which now played into the idea of making sure that the gift of the miracle of Hanukkah was greater than the gift we were giving the kids in their minds, so they focused on that. But it also was because we were poor and we couldn't afford big gifts, so it worked out really well to be spiritually minded and cheap at the same time. Yeah, we don't do huge gifts either. I said pajamas and like some small gifts. Right. So poverty and pious go hand in hand. Yeah, poverty and piousness go hand in hand sometimes. But no, we we gave small gifts uh, each night, uh, but we we do not uh, we do not give big gifts. And part of that was when I grew up, we would get big gifts for Hanukkah. So Hanukkah came in December. Mm-hmm. So if you needed a bicycle in June, you didn't get one till December, and then you couldn't <laughs> no. ride it for six months till the snow yeah. melted, till you could actually get to use it. I thought, I'm not doing this to my kids. If they want a bike in, in June, we'll get them a bike in June, and we'll get them something small for Annika. Did you ever want a bike in June? Uh, I don't remember. I think he just like got bikes for me off of people's back porches or something. It was like you know, the, the package thief, but for bicycles. So, you know. <laughs> hey, as he grew up, we needed new ones. Jonathan? Yeah, um, I, I'm not a big gift giver with Hanukkah. Uh, that's just the way Catherine and I do. Um, so we, we just, we, um, this is not what we do. I'm, I, I'm not saying I haven't gotten gifts for people for Hanukkah before, because I have. But it's not like, we don't, it's not something we plan out or anything. But, but technically... They only just now had a child that's going to be big enough. Oh yeah, sure, sure. Gifts, I, I, I'm so. not saying that that may not change, but <laughs> right now that's the 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 how, how we do it. Is, yeah. we don't. We but we do gifts, but we we've over the years kind of honed in, and uh, and generally speaking, we have like themed gifts. Everybody gets the same themed gift for the night, and generally they're practical gifts. So, like, it's always a sock night, there's always a pajamas night, there's always a book night, there's always a... Uh, a puppy night? That's a what? Yeah, I like that. Night. No, we have enough puppies at the moment. <laughs> uh, and, then, uh, and then we'll do, like, a board game night, we'll get a board game for the family, and then we'll... There's, there, we usually will do one big gift somewhere in Hanukkah for, for the kids, just as, as something special. And, and by big, I mean, like, a video game, or yeah, yeah, you know, something that costs sure. more than a pair of socks. 
Right. Um, but <laughs> but that's generally how we do it. We, we, that's fine. And, it, and it's not because we feel like you have to have gifts on Hanukkah. It's just because it's something fun for our family to oh, do. Yeah. Right. And I want to um, make one thing clear, and that's that although we tend to give small gifts, that should not preclude any of our listeners from sending large financial gifts <laughs> uh, during Hanukkah to any of the four rabbis represented at Messiantics. We want you to feel free to follow how the Lord would lead you concerning Hanukkah. Uh, and, and Rabbi Eric sure. says that we'll post our cash apps handles in no, the no. Uh, thread. No, I'm just joking. Uh, so, Walmart, right. Walmart gift cards are also acceptable, so we can go wear our PJs to Walmart and get what we would like. To so the, the second question, and uh, I'm going to throw this one out to Rabbi Jonathan, let you kick it off. The second question is, should you use candle or oil? Mm. Well, and the Hanukkah, by the way, for those that are... Not sure. Yeah, or we're electric. We're, that's a later question. Okay. Oh, okay. Don't jump ahead. So candle, Answer candle, the question at hand. Candle or oil? Uh, well, uh, while candles are halachically appropriate, um, if we're truly looking to use the biblical example as found in the apocryphal text of Maccabees. The biblical example as found in the book of Maccabees. <laughs> I get it. We use candles. Um, I've seen I, I, uh, oil is a little more, um, in my opinion, fancy. It's like for for bigger Hanukkahs. We we have <laughs> we're, t- we're too trailer park for the oil. <laughs> we're just candles. We all live. We all live either in Alabama or on the border of Florida and Alabama. So you know, oil is like Texas or California. We're still candles. No uh, oil is like New York or Massachusetts. Jonathan says. Jonathan says that the Gulf Coast is still riling from the BP oil spill. We're not wasting oil right now. Yeah, no, it's a huge traumatic an event. We we're just we're recovering. So anyway, no, we use candles in our home. Um, I I've seen some beautiful oil Hanukkahs before. Um, I had a friend who did board turning, um, and he made this gorgeous Hanukkah, which had um, the tops were all little uh, glass dishes um, made for holding oil, and he had the, the wicks and everything. Gorgeous. So if you can do oil, absolutely. Like those, They're beautiful, but we use candles just because it's economic for us. And just yeah. a shameless plug, if you need candles, go to thewpfarms.com for all of your candle needs. You should have tell Missy that she's just like getting involved with Hanukkah candles, maybe. Yeah, yeah. but you can get all kinds of wonderful candles for your holiday celebration <laughs> at the wpfarm.com. Toby, uh, candles. Yeah, I mean, I, I there was one occasion I saw a really nice oil one at a Hanukkah party, and I thought it was lovely. I just that candles are easier. Yeah, and when you got kids around and stuff, and they want to do it, and you know. Yeah, because oil keeps burning if it spills. Yeah, so we just you know do the candles. I uh, I personally really love oil Hanukkahs, uh, but uh, they're they're a bit much to deal with. Yeah. Um, you know, so it's kind of like the the difference between smoking a cigar and smoking a pipe is a pipe takes a lot more work and a lot more effort. Um, and, and depending on, you know, how impatient you are, that can be really annoying. And not having either of us (laughs) are endorsing smoking a cigar or a pipe, but just giving an example of the amount of work it takes to accomplish those tasks. But the reality is that, that candles are just more effective and efficient at the moment. So I'm good with either one. We have both, we have both oil and we've been known to set up, you know, all of our Hanukkiahs and including the oil ones and using those with the candles, uh, not yeah. putting the candles in the oil. But yeah. Uh, yeah, and using candles is easy because you can get a box of candles that have enough candles for the entire yeah. holiday. You don't have to do math and it just comes yeah. in a box all together. Someone else did the math for you and so that so, helps. So the next question, does the Shamash candle, which is the, the servant candle, the one that you light all of the, the regular candles with, I'm not saying that for your benefit, I'm saying that for the benefit of everybody listening who maybe doesn't know what in the world we're talking about. Does the Shamash candle have to be higher than all the other candles on the Hanukkah? I don't think it has to be higher, but I think it definitely has to be separate or preeminent or something that's noticeably different yeah. than the others so that you can tell this is the Shamash versus this is just a candle. Yeah, I think it often is higher just because that's the design of like the traditional look of a Hanukkah, but I think the most important factor of the Shamash is that it's prominent, that it's, it stands out as separate from the others, uh, as it's not one of the eight nights, it's the one lighting 
uh, the others. Yeah, that, that pretty much would say the same thing. It doesn't have to be higher, but it should be, uh, there should be some special significance. You could even use a different color candle, like, you, you, you know, have them all blue and one of them white or all white, yeah. one of them blue. And, you know, and that way, and, and it's a great message about how, you know, Yeshua uh, as, as a servant and who gave us light, you know. Yeah. I actually like some of the contemporary designs where they just like, it stands out. It's not necessarily higher or in the middle. I mean, because by the time we get the last time of Hanukkah, I mean, it's like life-threatening sometimes. Or at least hands <laughs> to, put it back. <laughs> to put it back. Yeah, if you get through sliding it, because it's like, okay, I got four burning yeah. things. So I like a lot of contemporary I've, designs. I've yeah. seen some where, uh, and we may actually even have one. Uh, right now our house is, our, our lives are in disarray because we are renovating a house and living in a camper and we've got trailer. stuff and multiple storage things. <laughs> trailer. It's kind of crazy. So uh, at the moment, uh, I don't really know where our Hanukkah are in general, but we, we have one that the, the, the shamash is both in the center and higher, but it's also offset so towards yeah. the front so that when you light all eight on the eighth night, you can put it back without losing your fingerprints. Uh, and you can mm. still be identified. Uh, so the next question, uh, now no cop-outs on this one, okay? Uh, and we're going to throw this one to Rabbi Eric first. What is your favorite flavor of sufganiyot? Blackberry. Blackberry jelly sufganiyot are the bomb. Yeah, uh, I had um, a raspberry that was really good. But so that's probably that's my favorite that I've ever had. Uh, but my favorite flavor that I've not had that I really want to try is fig. Mm. So that yeah. that's like something I just have never been in a place where you know that, that was being served. But uh, raspberry was great. Yeah. Um, but fig I really want. I'm gonna say raspberry only because it's one of the only ones I've had. Yeah. I want to know if lemon custard counts halakhically as a soup you know, because I <laughs> sure. because, now lemon's a fruit, so I, you know. Because I, if it is, then I would have to say lemon custard. But I think raspberry is a good place for it. So, so I love raspberry sufgani oats. I love uh, blueberry sufgani oats. But what I'd really love, and, and you know, this steps outside of, of normal, what I'd really love to try, and anybody listening to the podcast, if you want to try your hand at it and let me know how it works out, is I'd love some sort of a chili and chocolate-filled uh, so uh, funny, like dark uh, chocolate with uh, uh, chili, chili, like powder, yeah, powder, with chili powder. powder. Yeah. Oh, okay. Uh, it's like that's one of my favorite chocolate bars. Is like the the high uh, uh, cacao percentage uh, uh, dark chocolate with with uh, chili in it. Yeah. Um, and phenomenal. Cacao. Cacao. Sure. Why not? Yeah. All right. So the next question. <laughs> this one's important because this is. This question, this question may be the one question that gets us a little more than an off the cuff sarcastic style response no. because it's a huge debate in the Messianic movement, right? Yeah. So this question is, do you use the traditional Hanukkah blessing or a modified blessing that does not say, commands us to light the lights of Hanukkah? Okay, I'll answer first. We use the traditional commands us blessing, uh, even though we don't actually find a commandment in the Torah that says you shall light Hanukkah, largely because Hanukkah doesn't happen until long after the Torah is given. However, we are commanded to follow the traditions that were handed down to us. And so it is a commandment to follow the tradition, and so therefore we follow the tradition and light the candle saying, as you have commanded us, because of the tradition. Now, I'm also not so uh, dogmatic about that, that someone who uh, wants to say who allows us to light the Hanukkah night lights or something like that is, is uh, halakhically incorrect or... Not going to send them to bait in for that. Right, not going to send them to bait in. We're not going to excommunicate them. We're, we're, right. they're, they're not going to Gehenna uh, for uh, lighting the shamash wrong or the candle wrong while saying the wrong prayer. But uh, I think that our traditions are something that hold us together, that bind us together, and that we're commanded to follow the traditions that were handed down to us, and so that's how I do. Yeah, I'm the same way. Anyway. Uh... Brooke says the Shehegiano, which is, you know, brought us to this season. And mm -hmm. then she'll say, um, uh, she'll say, blessed are you, Lord our God, King of the universe, who has um, given us Yeshua the Messiah and commanded us to be a light of the world. So she's done those two. Um, yeah, I, I do the, the traditional blessing for the Hanukkah. 
um, uh, for much of the same reasons that, that Rabbi Eric and Rabbi Jonathan discussed. Um, now, uh, with that, it, what a lot of people don't realize is there's actually three traditional blessings that are right. said right. on Hanukkah. Yeah. One is said the first night. The other two are said throughout the uh, the eight nights. Uh, so you, the, the first night you say three blessings, the Shechianu, uh, the, the candle lighting, and then uh, uh, Basman. the Basman. Is that, yeah. And so you would, and then you would continue two of them throughout. Uh, so, uh, but yeah, I do the traditional blessings. I do all three, uh, first night to the second, third, fourth, so on. Uh, and, and not because obviously there's nowhere in scripture that says you're commanded to do this, but we are commanded to be a light to the world. And so yeah. I, I see great value in, right. in and, upholding and that. And one of the reasons that I say the traditional prayer that I didn't say earlier is that we're weird enough Agreed. You're on, weird. on certain things that we don't need to add more differences or divisions or separations from the greater body of Judaism. And so whenever we can be in agreement with mm -hmm. something that the greater body does, I think we should align with them. Uh, because we are part of them, just like we're part of the body of Messiah, and we should align with them when we can, where it yeah. doesn't contradict our faith or yeah. our belief system. Yeah, I always tell people we're, we we have a big enough hurdle to get over with trying to share the Jewish Messiah with the Jewish community just in the fact that we believe in Yeshua. We don't need to add cuckoo mm -hmm. to it to make right. it harder. Right. Like we don't need to throw, uh, you know, don't run around screaming the sacred name left and right in our congregations and driving non-believing Jewish people away by it. So, all right. Uh, the next question, Hanukkah home decorations, yes or no? Uh, we don't put lights up uh, around our house, but I do have a large, it's about a five foot tall Hanukkah that goes outside and has uh, electric lights that light we light for each night of it that one of our congregants made for us um, so we do have that outside of our house inside of our house my wife puts table runners down and decorations for the day but uh, but we don't do the lights we don't do the uh, the Hanukkah elf we don't do a Hanukkah bush <laughs> We don't do Hanukkah Hen Harry, I think is what it's called. Oh, that's the yeah. world, really? um, I did not know that was a thing. Yeah, it's a thing. Wow. It's it's the commercialized Jewish Santa Claus. Yeah, so, <laughs> and then there's the mensch on the bench. The mensch uh, on the bench. The yeah. Hanukkah version of uh, uh, yeah. uh, yeah. I, Now yeah. that one I'm going to get behind. <laughs> so, um, so we don't do those, but we do decorate as yeah. far as having our table and for our family celebration and things like that. Yeah, Brooke likes to decorate. So, um, I mean, I think year round she puts up lights, like just because we like the, the, the ambiance of it or whatever, you know, like she knows what you do. Well, she, Brooke does. Okay. Yeah. And Brooke, Brooke puts the, um, like she'll just put like, like she'll buy Christmas lights, not like the colored ones, like the, the just the standard. Yeah. Yeah. Like like, white, yeah. And she'll, and, and she'll do that. Um, but she does decorate. We do do. Hanukkah decorations. And, yeah. Uh, she does have a few Hanukkah gnomes that she's put around the house and stuff. She loves it, you know. So I think it's we, great. I mean, we also kid, have a I, sign that we put outside our house that says Happy Hanukkah. Yeah. Yeah. So yeah. And we, we put a. Made that for yeah. And we put an electric menorah in the window. Yeah. Um, and uh, yeah, and the kids love it. You know, so. I only laugh because we do the same. Uh, I, only, I only laugh because we're the same Catholic. Yeah. It's, it's one of Catholic's favorite to decorate for because it's lots of lights and things like we have the electric Hanukkah in the window and I am uh you know part of my honeydew list is uh you know here's the lights yeah we don't put them on the house we, no I do we, uh, I, do, yeah, I, I mean I, I the, think there's the yeah I think it's great we just don't yeah, yeah I, and I, I enjoy doing it I like doing it for her it's, and it's it is it's kind of fun to come home and the house is all lit up you know or at least the, we just do the porch and the yeah porch is really lit up and everything it's really nice we and uh I got her this um this thing that hangs up and it's like felt and you can put little felt candles in it. Uh, for each oh other. yeah. I've seen those. Yeah. Yeah. That's, 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 that's kind of fun. My, my wife loves to decorate for Hanukkah. Uh, like she's a, all about all the things like put it all up, make it. <laughs> my kids are very much like, well, all the, all the Christmas decorations are out all the way up and down the street. Like we should make them know that we celebrate Hanukkah. We should make every mm -hmm. uh, me on the other hand, I'm just lazy. Uh, and, and because I'm lazy and don't want to do it, um, I can come up with really good excuses. Like not we're not trying to make Hanukkah just the Jewish Christmas here. Let's not, no, uh, 
But uh, I have no objections to the decoration. Yeah, no, I'm I, truly, we are not trying to make yeah. Hanukkah the Jewish. Yeah, Jewish. I am too lazy to put them up like outside the house yeah. because you're going to have to take them down. You, you know, nah, yeah. dude, let's be honest. Yeah. I would be that house that it's, true, it's February lights, and they'd still the be up. The porch stayed up until about February. Let's, let's, yeah, let's, yeah. Let's <laughs> you got to get around to it. Let's be honest, Toby. The house you're in now... It's not about anything other than there. It's a death trap trying to set yeah. a ladder up. It's <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, but it's, yeah, it's but, really strange. The, yeah, and, the way it's built. And we don't do the lights because I want us to be different than the other houses around us. Yeah. We do the menorah because it says we're doing Hanukkah. Yeah. We don't do the lights because we don't want to be confused with, and we don't want people. Uh, and again, not condemning those that do other yeah. things because everybody has the ability to choose how they're going to celebrate and right, what's, absolutely. what's meaningful to them in that way. But we want our home to be stand out different. Just, you know, we're supposed to be uh, separate from and different from the other. And so we don't put the lights out because of that. But we do put the menorah out because we want people to know we're celebrating Hanukkah and that there is yeah. a celebration going on. Yeah, I have told Catherine, though, as soon as I find, like, the biggest, gaudiest, blow-up Hanukkah, I, like, I want to put that in. Yeah. <laughs> just one year, just to have said that I've done it. So the, but, the final question, the final question, are electric Hanukkahs kosher? Yeah, I think so. They are not technically halakhically acceptable, right? but... They are safer in some instances, which would make them halakhically acceptable like, yeah, behind to preserve depends light. On, depends on how the wiring in your house is. Yeah, right. Depends on, so, you know, if you're preserving life by not allowing your house to catch fire, then you would uh, it here, would be here, acceptable. But technically, yeah. it's supposed to be oil or, yeah. or a candle. Brooke, Brooke would take hers to work. So that's why, yeah. that's one of the reasons why we like them. I I've mean, seen we have people the with them in their cars. Yeah. Really? Yeah. Uh, well, right. you'll see... Chabadniks will put them up on the, yeah, they have on the, the ones on the roof yeah. oh, there wow. when they do their, their uh, Hanukkah parades to their yeah. uh, huh. uh, lightings. Yeah, w that the elect what we put in the window is an electric menorah, obviously. I mean, yeah, like, yeah. <laughs> you know. Uh, uh, the Hanukkah moose. Like the candles the, and put the drapes behind it. Yeah, right. There we go. <laughs> the antlers uh, of the Hanukkah menu moose yeah. that are uh, light. Yeah, but Brooke, Brooke would take one to work. And have it on her desk, you know. So. Yeah, we do an electric one in front I think window, it's fine. Uh, and that's you know because we do the white and blue lights in the porch, and the Hanukkah is in the window right next to the porch, so it's like very Hanukkah looking. Um, but yeah, I, I would say electric by itself is not halakhically uh, permissible, but if you're lighting candles and or oil along with the electric, then it mm. is a, then it is a permissible. Uh, Way of keeping now, Hollywood. I know this wasn't on Rabbi David's list, but there is a very controversial topic that we have not covered, oh, yeah. and it deals with Hanukkah. And Hanukkah, we eat latkes, we eat potato pancakes. Now, here is the question: applesauce, straight up applesauce, apple sauce, no questions. Or sour cream. That's that's the. Oh, uh, I do both. Straight up applesauce. No, sour cream is the only halakhically correct huh. way to eat. Except latkes. you're wrong. Applesauce no, all no. day. I do both. Actually, I, I put but, them on both sides. I put like sour cream on one side. Because applesauce is a, you know, the, the ingredients are basically crushed fruit with, you know, some powder. I think sugar is added, I think, a little bit to applesauce. But, and then sour cream is dairy. Um, I like to meet in the middle of the road and mix sour cream with salsa because, you know, tomatoes crush fruit. All right, get out of here. You're yeah. done. Yeah, here's so, the thing. Here's so, the reality. So here, no, no, if, no, you, if you have latkes with... Um, applesauce, it's the same as having a bagel with blueberries or cinnamon. No, no, those are donuts. That doesn't those count. are donuts <laughs> as opposed to bagels with onion or garlic but, or but legit, legit, legit opinion. This is this is as, as hot topic an opinion as they come. Sweet potato does not belong in a latke. Sweet potato does not well. belong in a latke. Yeah, it should be regular that. potatoes with sour cream. Okay, so we can all agree. We can all. Uh, Sweet for, potatoes for trash. Conclusion, sweet potato is not a latke. <laughs> yeah, I've never even had that. So. Well, this was fun, guys, and uh, we'll see what we can do uh, for throwing some more of these together. Uh, thanks for joining us for this special uh, uh, and completely arbitrary and random bonus material for you on the Messy Antics podcast. See you later.
Thank you for listening to the Messy Antics Podcast. Make sure to subscribe so you can be notified every time we drop a new episode. And be sure to follow and interact with us on social media at Messy Antics Podcast.